So the banged up and reeling Los Angeles Rams face the banged up and maybe not so reeling San Francisco 49ers in week two at SoFi Stadium. Uh, 49ers still should be in pretty decent shape no matter what the final injury report looks like, no matter what uh, the final inactive list looks like for Sunday. Uh, 49ers will be releasing their official injury report, the injury designations, later in the day on Friday. And then Saturday is when they have to make any kind of roster moves, including uh, bumping guys up from the practice squad to be available for the game. So uh, not going to talk uh, too much about George Kittle or Charvarius Ward on this one. Uh, you can go back to the one I posted earlier in the day as far as what it means for the 49ers if those guys can't play. Kyle Shanahan said that they would probably be listed as questionable on the injury report on Friday. So today what we're going to talk about, or right now what we're going to talk about, are the five 49ers to watch. It's something I've done every year for many years, I guess, um, at NBCSportsBayArea.com. Kind of zeroing in on five 49ers uh, that will play pivotal roles in the upcoming game. And I didn't necessarily give him this designation because uh, I used five other guys, but I did use Jordan Mason as kind of the jumping off point for the 49ers because just of what they they're asking him to do, you know, he's he's the he's the guy. You know, he's the guy running the football. He doesn't come out of the backfield and catch passes or do those kinds of things that Christian McCaffrey does. But the fact that the 49ers have really relied on him, 28 carries the first week, 20 carries the next week, a total of 247 rushing yards, which is only behind J.K. Dobbins in the NFL. So that tells you what the 49ers want to do. They want to get the run game going, but there's there's so many facets to this, and you know, last week, some people told me, oh, the 49ers should have come out running instead of throwing against the Vikings. I disagree. I think that the 49ers knew that they had opportunities on those early downs to get some yards. And if you wait until third down, if you just go run, run, pass, if you wait, if you get to those third downs with the Vikings, they do what we saw them doing, which was creating a lot of confusion for the 49ers offense. So It'll be important for Jordan Mason to get the run game going. Uh, the Rams' run defense has not been good, so Mason is definitely a key. Um, it, as far as the other guys to watch, Leonard Floyd, uh, he's facing his former team, and after a few years starting his career off with the, uh, the Bears, um, he really found his way with the Rams. and was basically 10 sacks a year kind of guy. He goes to the Bills, another basically 10-year, 10-sack season for him. Now the 49ers get him on a two-year, $20 million contract. They need him to step up. He looked pretty good, I thought, week one, or at least acceptable against the Jets. But then last week, no quarterback pressures of Sam Darnold. That has to change. Matthew Stafford is a guy who's going to want to sit in the pocket. He's going to want to get the ball out quickly. And he has fewer Weapons, and he ordinarily does with no Puka Nakua, no Cooper Cup. Those are guys who have very, really extraordinary short area quickness that he can get the ball out to them. So Leonard Floyd is going to have to beat his guy. And let's face it, this Rams offensive line is in total flux. Three or four starters won't be on the field. Uh, so many guys on injured reserve. So the 49ers should have an opportunity while all the Rams are sinking their assets into containing Nick Bosa that should allow Leonard Floyd some opportunities okay here's a guy that's that's kind of interesting to me it's Jake Brindle the center um a, a lot of talk coming out of that Vikings game about how he was kind of being pushed around a little bit and man do the Frayers need to make some changes there Chris Furster, the Frayers offensive line coach and run game coordinator really had some interesting things to say about him and he said remember how First off, we'll backtrack. Remember how everybody was talking about how well the offensive line played Monday night against the Jets in week one? Well, Furster doesn't think they did. In fact, he thought that Brindle played a better game in week two. Um, and he thought that, as I did, that you know the sack number, six sacks, weren't really indicative of how the 49ers were pass protecting on those plays. Now, there were also some, some opportunities that the 49ers had in the passing game that they gave up some pressures, didn't result in sacks, but still uh, the 49ers offense had a difficult time going as far as the pass protection goes. Still, 
pass protection, not necessarily every th- reason why the 49ers passing game wasn't really clicking week two. But anyway, back to Brendel. He said that um, basically he was asked about Brendel's play and if the 49ers might consider a a uh, putting in somebody else in place of him. So what Furster said was he's a better option uh, because of his quickness, his intelligence, his experience, one-on-one pass blocking ability, ability to finish in the run game on the second le- level, and his ability to snap off of double teams. So what he said was, I basically just listed all those reasons, you know, six, seven, eight reasons why he's a better option right now than Ben Barch. He's a better option than Nick Zakel. And he's a better option than Drake Nugent, who's on the Friars practice squad. So this is a, a big game for, for Brendel, for the offensive line, for a bounce back game. Remember, Rams don't have Aaron Donald anymore. He retired. That was a huge relief to everybody for the 49ers. They don't have to spend, in the words of Kyle Sheehan, 99% of their time trying to figure out how to game plan for number 99. So Jake Brendel at center, a player to watch in this game. Also, uh, Brandon Ayuk. I mean, this deserves very little discussion other than Kyle Shanahan was very happy with the way Brandon Ayuk played in this game as far as the route running, the being on point with the option routes, even the, the, the run blocking and all of that. The ball just didn't go his way a lot. He said that there were some opportunities for their, for Ayuk to make some plays. But it just didn't work out, whether it was breakdowns in pass protection or another receiver ran a wrong route that kind of drew coverage toward Ayuk. But uh, it sounded like both Ayuk and Kyle Sheehan were pleased with how week two went. Now, if, you know, depending on what happens with Kittle, we already know that Christian McCaffrey is out, Debo Samuel's out. So Ayuk will be the sole focus of the Rams defense, at least as far as on third downs in the passing game. So can he take advantage of that? The Rams are also banged up in the defensive backfield. So Brandon Ayuk, it's time for him to step up, play well, and have the stat sheet reflect it. Okay, my number two guy, Talano Hufanga. He's back. He's back in the starting lineup. He had a good week of practice. 49ers, I think we're ready to move on from George Odom, as we saw in the second half of that game against the Vikings, where Malik Mustafa, the rookie, got in there. So Talano Hufanga, a guy who really didn't think that he played all that great, and he didn't, uh, as far as being an all-pro, a first-team all-pro in 2022. I think, you know, we who watched it, and, and Hufanga says this himself, that there were still some areas that he had to tighten up. Well, he's been out since November with the ACL. So he's been rehabbing physically, but he's also been sharpening up mentally. So he steps on the field. He's raring to go. He's ready. And so Talano Hufanga brings some playmaking ability to the 49ers. He's a ball hawk. He's around the football. He's making plays in the pass game and the run game. So Talano Hufanga, definitely a player to watch. And the 49ers believe a significant upgrade for that defensive backfield with him getting back in the lineup. And then, of course, there's Brock Purdy. The entire nation will be watching Brock Purdy and saying, okay, can he do it without Christian McCaffrey? Can he do it without Debo Samuel? And with George Kittle's availability a little bit in question too, can he do it if George Kittle isn't 100%? For Brock Purdy, he said it's not so much about not, um, you know, kind of shrinking when uh, all those playmakers aren't out there. It's knowing the 49ers still have enough playmakers that all he has to do is do his job. The offense is designed in a way where he's not looking, he's not dropping back going, oh, I wonder where Debo is on this play, or I wonder where Kittle is on this play. I think I'm just going to throw it to them. It's the play call is designed to take advantage of what the defense gives the 49ers. So will the 49ers have certain plays designed to get the ball specifically to Brandon Ayuk, a bubble screen or something else? Of course. But for Brock Purdy, it is all about running the offense regardless of who's out there on the field so who's going to be out there on the field well if Kittle's not out there it's going to be Eric Saubert maybe some Braden Willis and you know potentially some Jake Tongas but also with we know that Debo Samuel won't be out there and we know that Christian McCaffrey won't be out there more than likely 
on third and long situations. The 49ers will either have Kyle Juszczyk in the backfield or nobody in the backfield at all. So then it's a matter of finding Brandon Ayuk. He's going to draw a lot of coverage. So then who is it? It's Jawan Jennings. Jennings could have a big game in this on this day because he's really good beating man coverage. So we'll see. And, and also finding using that kind of the body of his as like a power forward to box out and make catches in traffic. So Jennings needs to step up. And then what will the Frayers get from the other guys? You know, will they get something from Chris Conley, from Ronnie Bell and Jacob Cowing? We'll see how the, all that turns out. Jacob Cowing uh, got a vote of confidence from Shanahan that he will remain as the punt returner despite the muff against the Vikings. But he might also have an opportunity, his first opportunity as a pro, to step up in the on the offense too. He hasn't had an offensive snap in those first two games. So that's it. It's kind of getting you set with some players to watch for the 49ers as they get, face, get set to face the Rams. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for leaving a comment and everything else and a big thumbs up and uh, we'll be back with you soon as we get you ready continue to get you ready for this week three game 49ers and the rams